All right, folks, let's talk about the underrated Hearthstone cards of Castle Nathria. These are cards that were rated pretty poorly by the community, but then uh, actually got played quite a lot. So in other words, there's a big difference between expectations and reality. And in this case, it's cards that exceeded expectations. And um, I'll be honest, there's a couple weird ones in this list, like Murloc Holmes, for instance. I think this is going to be hotly debated but uh <laughs> that's what we're gonna talk about because i am just reporting the data here and we're interpreting the results uh as the data suggests so for instance murloc holmes was rated at three stars literally by both myself and the community exactly three stars but in reality murloc holmes actually is is a card that got played a lot and I think some of you will be scratching your head at that a little bit. Like, wait, I don't really see that much Murloc Holmes. And it's true that right now he's he's not really getting played that much. He's still popping into decks here and there. Often Renathal decks that are looking for a little bit of extra value. Like I just saw a, a top 50 legend warrior deck that was running Murloc Holmes today or something, for instance. So like he shows up, you know, he's, he's doing his thing. Uh, the real reason he got such a high peak play rate where he peaked in 14.4% of decks was, if you guys remember, Control Shaman. Infused Control Shaman that showed up and then, you know, right before Ancestral Guardian got nerfed. Murloc Holmes was in that deck and that was a very prominent meta deck. That was like one of the best decks in the game, top two or three at the time. And most lists were running Murloc Holmes because that's what I believe it was Habu Gabu ran who kind of popularized that list and then Murloc Holmes got played a lot. Now, I would argue Murloc Holmes wasn't really the best card in that deck. Maybe if you're literally the best player in the world, he's awesome or, you know, top 500 legend or something. He's great, maybe, because you kind of have a really good game instinct. But for most players, he really wasn't that good. And I would argue he has not actually been underrated. I, I think he's sort of lived up to the three-star expectation in most ways. He's looking like a three-star card right now. And outside of that one really specific scenario where he was probably being played unnecessarily, I don't really think Murloc Holmes has been, has been underrated. So that said, right, technically speaking, from, from the data analysis that I did, uh, you know, Murloc Holmes was rated, I actually don't have the numbers, but let's say he was rated like 80th as a 3.0 star card. That's uh, roughly correct, I think. He was, oh, actually, I have it. It's 87th. He was rated 87th, right? So he was well in the bottom half of Hearthstone cards for Castle Nathria, but in reality, he peaked at 23rd played rate. Peak played rate. So that is a difference of 64 positions. So he, he was 64 cards better than people expected. And that is the 10th most underrated card in Hearthstone. So again, I'm reporting the data as it exists. I don't really think the sentiment backs this one up. I feel like he's pretty firmly a three-star card. I actually think everybody kind of nailed it. Uh, number nine card is Kel'Thuzad the Inevitable. This was rated at three and a half stars four stars by me in reality of course we know kelthazad's being played a lot in spooky mages as hs weebly calls them skeleton mages kelthazad mages as a as a reward a payoff card for uh big volatile skeleton boards which isn't actually the number one way to play mage right now big spell mage is a little bit more popular which doesn't always have this card but uh, a really nice win condition that has proved to be valuable skeleton mages got there and Kel'Thuzad, of course, is, is the big peak finisher for Skeleton Mages alongside Denathrius, basically having a kind of dual win condition there. So he peaked in 18.6% of decks, which um, is a really high peak. You know, that's in the top 20 cards for played rate. But Kel'Thuzad, you know, was outside the top 60. Yeah, he was he was 67th. So actually, that's really close to dead middle of the expansion. So people thought this was a dead average card right in the middle, basically the median card of all ratings. And in reality, of course, was pretty dang good. Showed up in 18% of deck. So pretty, pretty notable difference there. There are going to be more mage cards that show up, by the way. It's not just Kel'Thuzad here. So stay tuned. All right, next up, this one surprised me. Flustered Librarian, also rated at three and a half stars. So again, dead center in the expansion. So people thought this was going to be a very mediocre middle of the road card in reality of course we all remember when imps hit early in the expansion they were everywhere and they were outrageously powerful 
Uh, Flesh of the Brain was very, very good as a damage output reward for summoning a lot of imps. So play this on one, start developing your imps on two and three. If it's not killed, it's hitting for six, it's hitting for seven. And before you know it, the opponent is dead, particularly in combination with Vile Library, the location. This one peaked in almost 23% of Hearthstone decks. That's how common Warlock was early in the expansion. I gave this one four stars. I thought, you know, it's a one drop. It gets bigger. It has damage scaling. That is a reliable, uh, you know, tool we've seen over and over again in Hearthstone that tends to work well. I had a little more faith in this one. My four star rating is equivalent to a community, probably like 4.3 or 4.4, somewhere around there. Again, 3.5 is actually a pretty middling score for, for community ratings. And in fact, dead, dead in the middle, right? It should be a three average, but it's really a three and a half average. So they're about 0.5 points higher than, than, than you'd expect. I, I, I did see a lot more potential in this one. I think people slept on imps in general, as you're going to see in a moment. Uh, I think people thought imps were not going to get there. We've had so many failed imp archetypes in the past, just imp failure, imp failure, imp failure. And to see one finally get there and work, I think surprised people. So they probably weren't expecting this to be quite as good. Speaking of which, Vile Library rated at 3.3 stars. Outside the top half of cards, I mean, just, you know, people didn't think it had a lot of chance. I think people in general were low on locations. They thought locations are going to be weak, and as we've seen, they thought imps were going to be weak. When you combine that, Vile Library gets a pretty bad score here at 3.3. Again, I know 3.3 doesn't sound that bad. It's like, oh, well, that's that's middle. Compared to where it landed, which was one of the best cards in the expansion, average, an average score does not capture the power level, of course, of Vile Library. Easy five-star card. I mean, it completely dominated the early expansion meta. Even four stars for me was underrating this one. Absolutely a home run. Got nerfed already. This is the original version of the card here since this was the ratings people gave. Peaked in 23% of decks. Got, I guess there was some list that cut Librarian because it peaked a little lower, but uh, pretty insane. Just absolutely home run card. You can't really get much stronger than this one. It felt so overpowering and crazy early on. All right, next up, this one, uh, this one surprised me. This one uh, is definitely not as powerful of a card as our last two but was also rated really really badly so again the difference there is large because this one was rated so freaking poorly 2.6 is basically bottom of the barrel one of the worst cards of the expansion uh actually yeah this this puts it in the bottom 15 cards out of 135 card set so really, really poorly rated, but Suspicious Alchemist is actually getting a little bit of play. There are people putting this in their mage decks as a turn one sort of value generator. And I've certainly had this played against me a surprising number of times. It's still not, a, you know, it's not a five-star card. I don't even know if it's quite a four-star card, you know? Uh, I, would, I would put this in that like three and a half range if I were really trying to hone in on it. But still, it's getting played. It's showed up in 5% of decks, which isn't bad. I know that the previous cards have had pretty high numbers. 5% might sound might sound low, but that's good. Some entire classes don't achieve a 5% played rate. So getting up to 5% as a peak, um, peak inclusion is pretty good for the Suspicious Alchemist. I think people probably expected this card to have more downside than it does. I mean, I, I've found often, even if they get the copy right, sometimes it's just about getting the resource you need versus your opponent. So... Probably people overweighted the downside here and didn't consider the upside enough of just a really cheap discover card that, that you know, okay, my opponent got one, who cares? I'm looking for burst damage or I'm looking for a skeleton summoner or something that's synergistic for me and perhaps useless for them, right? It tends to tends to balance out in your favor. So um, pretty solid card, not a home run, but just a good card that people didn't think had much chance at all. Again, 2.6 is basically... I think the lowest rating, if I look real quickly, I don't even know if anything went under to this expansion. Sometimes it does. Roosting Gargoyle, Stoneborn Accuser, and Sin-Fueled Golem, none of which have gotten any play. And then only another maybe five cards below this one. What I say, it's in, in the bottom 15, so, you know, another five or ten lower than this one. But it is very near the very bottom of the expansion. Next up is the Famished Fool. This one was given 3.1 stars. So that's pretty low, well outside the, 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 the half mark, halfway point. So in the bottom half of cards, really even 
uh, you know, in the bottom third of cards at 3.1 stars. So not a high expectation here for the Famished Fool, but in reality peaked at 22.7% of decks. Again, this one went in line with Control Shaman. Much like we saw with Murloc Holmes, it's got a big initial boost because it was being played in those Control Infused Shaman decks as a card draw tool. Turns out Infused is way better than most people expected. People didn't think Infused was going to be any good, but it's actually pretty solid. We're seeing a lot of Infused cards being run. So I think in general stuff that relied on Infused got a little bit of a, uh, you know, decline in ratings or a, a unfair, unfair read in ratings. People thought Infused was going to be bad. Said it's good. Famish Fools found a deck that worked with it. I still see people po uh, tossing this into decks here and there. Not quite as popular as in the Control Shaman era, but but still a pretty useful card. So I think this just got that Infuse penalty, basically. People don't like Infuse. Famish Fool is an Infuse card, and therefore, yeah, it doesn't get it doesn't it doesn't get a good rating. Infuse four in particular probably seemed like a high total pre-expansion. I also only gave this one three stars. I thought it was pretty fringe. Thought one or two decks might need it as a card draw reload, but uh turns out some of the best decks actually used it as opposed to a, a solid option here and there. So I underrated this one as well. This is, a, I think, a solid four-star Hearthstone card. All right, next up, this one's surprising. Cold Case rated at 2.9 stars. That's terrible. It's an awful community rating under three. But in reality, of course, Cold Case everywhere. It's all over the ladder. You see this card so much in Mage. Peaked the 19% of made decks, a big part of skeleton builds, of course. Great armor gain, great great uh, board summoning. And uh, I was surprised by this rating. I gave this one four stars. I actually wasn't as high on the mage package in general. I didn't think all the skeleton cards were gonna be great. As you'll see briefly soon, as, as you'll see soon in this list, I gave one of them a pretty bad score, but I just thought Cold Case had like a general utility. I thought even if you weren't running a full skeleton package, you might be able to run Cold Case just because it's a nice little armor gain and a little board builder, you know, two two twos that do some ping damage. That seemed useful to kind of slow down opponents while establishing a more defensive line. So I, I did see the line for Cold Case. I thought this one was going to be pretty good. I guess other people, again, were not sold on the skeleton package in general and thought this might be limited to skeletons specifically the rest of this list i kind of get it i understand why many of them were rated poorly this one did really surprise me though it's just a lot happening in this card frost energies bodies on board armor gain ping damage like there's a lot of cool stuff there i, I thought for sure some way or another this would this would find a home so next up this one's crazy collateral damage eight mana hunter spell rated two and a half stars by the community i gave this one three stars but honestly i don't know why i thought i gave this two stars i double checked i gave it three that three star seems unfair i don't know i thought this was a bad card i thought i really thought this was a two star card i don't know why it says three but that's what i said in the video but in my heart of hearts i thought it was going to be really terrible but uh collateral damage actually found a really big home in face hunter early in the expansion it has fallen off since then for two reasons number one face hunter is not as prominent as it was uh, at the expansion release period, that first couple weeks, Face Hunter was very popular. This peaked in, in almost 10% of decks. That was all Face Hunter. But it actually had a bug. It, it got a bug fix uh, in that first expansion patch. And since then, it has plummeted. It, uh, it used to do extra damage. I'm not going to explain exactly how the bug worked because I honestly don't remember the full details. But basically, it was like double counting it's excess damage in certain board states and it would pump out damage more than you would expect it to when specifically doubled by the twin bow naga card whose name i don't remember twin bow terror coil if you doubled it with twin bow this would go off twice and do weird stuff and give you extra damage which i think really really dramatically helped it was already declining and then the patch hit and it plummeted even more so now it's an only one percent of deck so something with the bug fix or the meta change has definitely reined in collateral damage so perhaps this is really about a three star card or a two and a half star card uh you know maybe it was the bug that was propelling this to such great success maybe it was a meta fit i don't know exactly what it was it basically occurred twice even though the minions on board already died okay that, that sounds like a reasonable explanation again i don't remember the details i never played the deck but but yeah i don't i don't know maybe maybe we weren't actually all that wrong Maybe it was the bug, right? Maybe it didn't work like we expected, and that's why um, I was even surprised when it was bugged. It was good. It seemed like such a mana gap for that deck to to, to work with, but it was a good deck. It, it made sense. 
the data was there to support it. But this is an interesting case because it might have been a bug that, that propelled this one and not actually its own merits. It's going to be hard to ever know, but maybe we'll keep an eye on this one. If it pops up again in a future meta, it's like, oh, maybe collateral damage actually was a good card. It just did enough damage, even though it's expensive, that it'll get there. All right, so uh, I think we have two cards left and I got to go fast, guys. I got to hurry. I'm, I'm going to be late to dinner, but that's okay. Worst things have happened. All right, so next up is Deathborn. And uh, this is the other side of the mage equation for skeleton cards. This is the third mage skeleton card on the list, rated 2.7 stars. Really bad. I only gave this one three stars, and I am honestly surprised I gave it three stars again. I, I wasn't in love with this one, because if you guys remember, this actually got revealed at five mana. And then they were like, oh, wait, no, actually, it's not five mana. We've already rebalanced this one you know, before the release, and it's actually going to be at six mana. And a lot of us were like, oh God, it's five mana, it looked great. It's six mana, it's terrible. I'm never gonna play Deathborn at six mana. No. So we all gave it bad scores. We were all like, oh man, five, five mana would have been a four star card. Six mana, nah, get out of here, too much. Turns out, of course, six mana is totally fine for Deathborn. It's still insane. It's a super powerful card. Great fuel for your skeleton stuff. Uh, really nice swingy card on board in general. So has far exceeded the 2.7 star rating and even the three star rating. Of course, this is a strong four plus card easy. Peaked in 16 and a half percent of decks. Still getting played a ton. I actually think that might be going up soon. It is very, very powerful. Even at six mana, we were wrong. This card's good. It can kill your own skeletons. And if something dies in the death order, it counts as a kill from the spell. That used to be true, but that actually got changed. I think in a recent patch, I think, I think like a day or two ago that got changed. They were talking about hot fixing that, uh, or, or I, I just saw a thread on Twitter. I don't know the details, I guess, if it has been changed yet, but there was a thread on Twitter talking about how they changed that mechanic. So it will no longer, I think, proc an extra skeleton if a skeleton kills something or a death rattle kills something. Double check that, but I, I, did, I did hear that. And that may actually reduce the power level of this card a little. I don't think it'll be a huge shift, but it may get a little bit worse. Oh yeah, Bopia, don't feel bad. I'm glad you brought it up. That was a very helpful thing to talk about. A good reminder to discuss that so that may be a boost to the card that makes it weaker but i think ultimately we still all really miss the mark on this one much better than expected so let's talk about the final card the most underrated card of castle nathria do you know what it is i know what it is it's insatiable devourer this guy was rated 2.9 stars terrible rating just really bad under three stars is bad for community ratings i gave him two stars two stars in reality he peaked in 28 percent of decks that's insane that is an outrageously high played rate one of the most played cards of the expansion i think probably top five actually i, I didn't check but very high because he was getting played in both those control shaman decks that we talked about of old the infused control shaman that was really popular pre-nerf and also in druid decks druid decks running this guy as well i've even seen him popping up now into like relic infused demon hunter lists turns out if your deck is going long at all if you have renathal if you're playing denathrius you can probably make insatiable devourer work in a lot of decks because he's just so freaking swingy he often removes a few giant minions and becomes a 15 15 a 20 20 a 30 30 threat that if not answered immediately of course just ends games in his own right so both being able to remove your opponent's stuff and develop a monster body on board has, has proven that the Devourer is awesome. I think for me, I thought this one was going to be too expensive at nine mana. I thought most decks weren't going to be able to go that long. I don't think I accounted for uh, wanting to play towards Denathria. So having slower game plans than normal, this meta has pushed our mana curve back a lot to make Denathria fit into decks well. Uh, but beyond that, I, I probably thought Infuse 5 was going to be a big check on this card, but really Infuse has been pretty easy to satisfy in most cases. So Infuse as a mechanic exceeded my expectations and mana curves and deck styles definitely shifted more late game than I dreamed. And that has made Devourer really, really good. Ginormous difference here, making him the most underrated card of this expansion. And I, I really think one of the most underrated cards we've had in a long, long time really cool to see this one work i'm glad cards like this work in some ways he's still frustrating to play against a little bit i think you know if you fix guff problems if you fix maybe some denathrius problems this card would be a pretty welcome card i think in combination with all those other things he might feel frustrating sometimes but i think i think at the end of the day cards like this working in hearthstone is something i i prefer over don't it's just you know you need you need power level tweaks around him basically to make him feel a little bit healthier 
so that said guys i gotta run uh it's been great talking through the most underrated cards thank you for sharing your thoughts i'm super super late so i'm just gonna hop off love you a ton thanks for watching and until next time uh game on